G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder, and welcome to patch 3.1, Groundbreaking. Yes, and this is absolutely groundbreaking for the Russians who get their hands on the MiG-23 MLD. The MLD is actually quite a considerable upgrade over the MiG-23M, and finally brings it up in line with the JA-37C and the EJ Kai. This makes it among the best of the top tier planes, and is an absolutely brilliant plane to fly. Overall, I've had quite a lot of fun in it, and that's mainly because I've started using the radar missiles on these types of planes. And you might be thinking, well, surely, you know, it's an R-24, it's only about as good as an AIM-7E2, and you would be right. But remember, a radar missile is only as good as the radar that it's strapped to, and my god, this radar is absolutely brilliant. This radar, in fact, has a mode that is called MTI, and from what I know, it just filters out ground clutter, making it easier to spot things that are close to the ground. Um, yeah, pulse doppler moments coming right at you, except with a sort of budget pulse doppler, if you will. Regardless, the MiG-23 MLD also comes with a couple of extra little bells and whistles, that being a bit more engine power, it seems to be a bit lighter, and it has a lot more countermeasures, meaning that it is a lot more able to fly defensively. And that is the key to the MLD. This is what makes it so much more capable than the MiG-23M. The MiG-23M is all good and well with the R60Ms, and it's all good and well with the R23Rs. It's good and great with all of those, but I'll tell you what, if it is not able to defend itself from an AIM-9J, then it's pretty useless. And I say that as an exaggeration, of course, because whilst the MiG-23M was certainly nowhere near the top, it was fairly capable. It, it was decently capable. But the MLD is just a whole new kettle of fish. It is just very, very nice, and I honestly don't know why we didn't get this thing the first time around, with the EJ Kai and the Vigan. Honestly, this thing is a great amount of fun. No R60Ms, but plenty of countermeasures, MTI radar with uh, R24Rs, so you are going to have yourself a great time with this thing. Now, as you can see, this plane is probably one of the fastest in the game at the moment. Uh, I'm very, very easily breaking 1400, and you might think, well, other planes can surely break 1400. Uh, no problem, and you would be absolutely right, but there are many planes that can't break 1400 this quickly, and that is what I'm getting at here. It isn't really how much it has, it doesn't really have that much to do with the raw speed of the plane, it's more its acceleration, and acceleration is the thing that's going to get it, get you out of trouble in the long run. So, our first engagement here is with an F4F, that guy is, uh, he's pretty much buggered, so we're just going to leave him. I've prepped another R60, but I'm not really seeing any enemies until I see the F4E above me. The F4F early goes down, and I decide to set my sights on the F4E. I've noticed that there's no one below me that can pose a threat, and of course, I want to close that distance a little bit with this F4E. If he's not paying attention, maybe I can get myself a sneaky little kill. Fire a missile off at about 3 kilometers, and because of the high altitude that I'm at, the uh, missile will have a little bit of a longer range, and so it will strike the target quite easily. Now, to go and help out some friendlies, we're going to fire an R60 or prep an R60 for this F5, uh, but I think the F5 is pretty much going to either eat it or... Yeah, it's going to eat it, so not looking great for this guy. I'm going to prep myself an R24 on the way down, but of course he is traveling to the side of my radar, and it's not really going to pick it up quite well, so I'm going to prep an R60. So, what do we learn here? This plane is uh, fairly strong at those types of engagements where you don't have any enemies facing you, and that's not really something new that we've learned from the MLD, but what we have learned here is have a look at that shot. Oh, it was so, so close to that F5. Well, not quite, because the R24 needs a little bit of time to work itself out on target, and uh, when it does, it is going to shine. But for the R60s, if you're firing at an enemy that doesn't really see you coming, I think you're going to have a great time, and especially considering that this plane is very fast, you are able to close that gap quite quickly. So there's one kill there, and we're going to go for another one here. I don't really think it's going to hit, but you know what? R60s are magical missiles like that, and they do tend to uh, do a fair amount of damage in that respect. They tend to be those types of missiles that turn quite rapidly and therefore sacrifice a little bit more range. So unlike the AIM-9Js, you're going to be needing to fire these at fairly close angles or at targets that are uh, sort of close to or below Mach 1. Otherwise, you may find yourself having a hard time. But uh, that's okay because we have plenty of enemies to sort of feed off here. 
these types of planes, partic particularly the Russian planes, they tend to feed off enemies that do not have a reasonable amount of awareness, and that is going to be where you really make all of your kills. If your enemy has no awareness, then you know what, you're going to have a great time, but if your enemy does have awareness, you're going to need to find them in a one versus one situation, otherwise you will find yourself in a bit of a struggle. But the MLD is more than capable of that, so we're going to switch to this particular match here, and uh, this match, I was quite happy with this. Now I haven't actually got any aces yet, I have got a fair amount of three kill games, and right now I'm using the MTI mode to try and find a target here. Um, oh, not the MTI, the ACM mode, sorry, the uh, something combat maneuvering, advanced combat maneuvering, I think. Uh, regardless, basically what I'm going to do is try and find someone, lock onto them, and hopefully get a kill. But notice how the radar dips at that last second, and uh, the R60 just, just bombs in into the ground. It's a bit of a shame, but you know what, it's better than nothing. I guess the Jaguar at least spent some flares, and my, uh, my, my friend and colleague here, Jam with his MiG-23M has managed to score the Jaguar A regardless. So that's a pretty decent bait for him, and of course the Jaguar A has wasted its uh, its life. So the MiG-23M here is, I believe, quite on par with all of the other jets at its tier. Finally, it is something that is very, very much equivalent. Now the F-4E, I believe, is still pretty damn close. I would say slightly worse. I would say it's a little bit more closer to the MLD than the MiG-23M, but is still not quite as good as the MiG-23M, uh, MLD. So we're kind of in that gray area there. Now speaking of gray area, this is a little bit of a gray area here. The uh, EJ manages to get Pulse Doppler, so well, I think that's just down to my uh, late minute, late notching or my late uh, pulls away from my opponents. So this F4 EJ is going to try maybe question mark cop and uh, little R60 here and yes yes they do. The F5 is coming in hot and of course not going for me so I was thinking of maybe going for him but you know what I decided maybe I should go against that and then I spot the F5 coming in behind me quite hot so I need to keep my speed up and I'm noticing a lot of lot of red dots behind me so it is time to uh, to panic, I guess. Not really, because I've got plenty of speed, I've got plenty of performance, and the one thing that I really like about the MLD is that you're no longer bothered by those F5s. You can actually jet away quite easily, throw on that afterburner, put the nose down a little bit, fold the wings back, Naruto, run your hell away, and uh, you know what? You're going to mostly have a good time. So, basically what I've done here is gotten a little bit of distance. This is the classic type, like, jet boom and zoom thing where you get a little bit of distance and then you reassess the battlefield, maybe go after an enemy, and the enemy here I'm choosing is the A7E. Fingers crossed he is not paying attention, and uh, yeah, he is, so no, no R60 kill for me. But this F5 here is very much fixated on Jam, and fingers crossed I can get a kill on him, but I've just spotted this F5C sitting right behind me, and uh, aim 9E heading my way. I don't really want to mess with that. I don't really want to die to a 9E. And of course, I have plenty of power to pull away from all of these enemies here who have been turn fighting with us three MiG-23s. And we're essentially energy trapping these guys because what we're doing is forcing the enemy to turn. And, and that's good for us because we don't really want to get into a low speed turn fight with the likes of an F5 and A7 and co. I, I don't really feel like that. And then finished off by the pulse doppler moment of uh, the FGR2. Not really my thing. So instead, we're going to brute the A7E with a little bit of 23s. You can flare all you want, but a shipping of cannon is not going to give you any mercy. So we're going to just jet away once again, pick up some speed. And of course, I th uh, I th I'm pretty sure that these guys don't have any more missiles. Speaking of missiles, FGR2 is our number one missile carrier, therefore the number one threat. So you can get a very, very kind pulse stopper moment, young sir, and uh, goodbye and good riddance. Now, good riddance to my last missile leaves me with no other choice but to go guns, guns, guns. And so I have a, I have a friend in need here. You can see Jam is baiting up all of these enemies and uh, it, it's not going to end out well for him. Unfortunately, this little F5 friend does take him out, but at least I can avenge him here on this guy here. I'm convinced he's damaged already, but um, you know, you guys didn't see that. That was that's perfectly fine. I completely hit him, destroyed him in like three bullets. So, well, turns out even I make mistakes, and uh, I, I wouldn't be too sad if you miss a shot like that because the Shippenov cannon is a very, very hard thing to aim. 
I've had a lot of trouble aiming this thing because it is in a weird spot. It's quite far back and it is underneath the fuselage. So I would consider it fairly similar in position to the likes of the English Electric Lightning's cannons, uh, the Canberra's cannons, maybe even the Jaguar's cannons. Uh, I have, I always have trouble aiming these types of cannons and I just can't, maybe, maybe I can pick Y. But either way, that's four kills and uh, unfortunately no ace for me. But at least Jam and I baited some kills for each other and I thought that this one would be really nice to see. So these are the capabilities of the MLD. This plane is crazy consistent. I tend to either get one, two or three kills almost every single match uh, and occasionally walk away with four like this one and two assists. So you know what? This plane is very, very capable and I quite enjoy playing this thing. It is finally great to see something that is now on par with the other planes in the tech trees. So fingers crossed we can actually see something in the future that might be similar for things like the S, um, the French, and of course a couple of others sort of up there. We would really love to see a little bit of evenness, but for now to see that Russia is now back on the top playing field is a great feeling. Anyway, ladies and gents, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.